There's only a few weeks left before the presidential election, and Bernie Sanders is doing whatever he can to get people on that Team Hillary bus. He was recently interviewed by Now This, and he had a message for you know everybody that has questions about Hillary Clinton. You know all the Bernie or Busters, the people that um, insist on voting for Jill Stein, the people that have gone over to Gary Johnson, maybe the, even the people that have gone over to Donald Trump. Um, he wants them to know that it's through Hillary Clinton that we're going to reach our progress. Uh, so here's a few of his comments. About 80 percent, 80 percent, I would say, of the Democratic national platform is what we believe in. Now, that's pretty good. So when you ask me, where do we go from here, in a sense, it means that we implement this. Many of your supporters are struggling with the choice that they've been given in this election. Yeah. They're still bitter, they're frustrated, there's still some residual anger. Yes, I, I got it. Um, I mean, I, I, I do understand that. But I think from a practical point of view, I would hope that all those people who work with me on this campaign, who supported me, understand that Donald Trump would be a real, real, real disaster for this country. He stands in opposition to everything that we believe in. On the other hand, the day after the election, we don't sit back and say, well, Clinton is president. What we do is we mobilize our people to make certain that uh, hopefully President Clinton, uh, hopefully a Democratic Senate moves forward uh, with an agenda uh, that helps transform this country. This is not trust. We're not here to trust. It is the very opposite of what I am saying to say, oh, sit back, elect Clinton and then trust. No, mobilize, educate, fight. And if there are Democratic members of Congress, or if Clinton, when elected president, does not go forward in doing the right thing, let them know how you feel about it. I think what's very um, interesting about what he said first is him using the word practical. Yeah. It, he went from revolutionary. Revolutionary. To practical. Yeah. And we, we need to be practical about this. Pr- and see, and see, now. and see, and that that is... That word is key to understand who uh, who he's talking to here. Yeah. Who what the audience is. He's not talking to people who originally supported Hillary Clinton. He's talking to, like you said, people who supported him. Yeah. And are now in support of Jill Stein. Right. Because, you know, we're considered people who are, uh, I guess, ideological extremists. So. <laughs> We need to be more practical. Right. Another thing I disagree with him with is he's claiming that he's not telling people who to vote for, which he, he kind of is. Yeah, he kind of is. Actually, not even, not, not just kind of. Like, like I, I'm just remembering the, the DNC. Yeah. When he conceded. Yeah. He pretty much said, put your support into Hil- electing Hillary Clinton as yeah. president. So he's already said who to vote for. And he has said that a vote for Jill Stein is a vote for Trump. He has said a vote for Gary Johnson is a vote for Trump. He has mm-hmm. said that it's not the time for a protest vote. He's categorized our willingness to support Jill Stein as a protest vote, even though we believe in Jill Stein the same way we believed in Bernie Sanders. Was our a vo- was, a vo- was our vote for him? Yeah, was that a, pro- as a protest vote? Well, yeah, it kind of was. Question. It it was. It was a protest against corruption. Yeah, and money and politics. Right, but it was something corporate greed. But it I mean, was a, a vote. For, for something that we believed in. P- progressive platform. Yeah. So he says that we need to elect Hillary Clinton. And then the day after the election, we mobilize our people and we make sure that she adheres to that progressive platform. He has said that, um, you know, we don't we don't trust that she'll get things done. No, we have to make her get the things done. You know, us along with the progressive members of the Senate and maybe oh, the and house. When he said, tell them how you feel. Yeah, she, he said, let them know how you feel. Let, said, let them know how you feel about it. Like, if Hillary Clinton isn't doing what she's supposed to be doing, let them know how you feel. Like, nah, bruh. Nah, bruh. It's like, how no, do you we, think that would work? We need you and the progressive, the progressives in Congress to have some political agency mm-hmm. and put them on blast. Right. But see, even that, you know, because presidents are criticized routinely all the time by the American populace, by our politicians, all the time. But does it change the way they act? Because there's been a lot of emphasis put on the TPP, right? Mm-hmm. 
is that I mean, is that affecting how Barack Obama perceives the TPP or does he still want to implement it? You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to do what they do. And especially somebody like Hillary Clinton, who is here because of her corruption, you know, pay to play and her Wall Street connections and money and politics, all that. That's her. That's who she is. Somebody like her is going to get in the White House and, of course, feel emboldened by her previous actions. You expect her to put those to rest and, because and not how we engage feel about it. Yeah. My, yeah, exactly. My thing is if uh, how we feel about it now, uh, you know, hasn't caused her to kind of shift uh, in her political activities. What makes him think that when she kind of gets the crown that right. that's going to change? What, uh, what we already in, we we were kind of. Uh, asserted this in an earlier video where there's a Princeton study that acknowledges that the American people have no input, really, no emphasis on whether legislation is passed or not, no matter how much we support it or how much we don't support it. We really have no input to whether our politicians actually make it a law. That's gonna, a bill. That's that's, that's, vote that's on. all going to change if Hillary Clinton gets up in why, there, though. Why in the world would that happen, though? Why in the world would that happen? We know exactly who she is. We know exactly who she is, and she's not changing anything. So we can criticize her from day one to her last day in office. Is that going to make her actually represent the people? Because we know that she has a public and a private position, right? We know that during the campaign, during the campaign against Bernie Sanders, how she said that, um, you know, universal health care was a bridge too far, pretty much Uh, something that will never come to pass. We saw in the released emails or the leaked emails that she said that uh, free tuition was Scandinavia pie in the sky. They don't even know what they're talking about. So we expect that when she gets into the White House, she would just all of a sudden become a true champion of progressivism okay then well, well because we who, but since well, because since, we are requesting we it just very uh, small amounts we incrementally get our needs met uh well, who gets their needs met when it comes to legislation and passing of bills top 10 percent hmm. the top 10 top percent, percent of earners earners and like and they represent well, they represent billionaires. They represent uh, special interests, corporations. And so we're expecting the candidate that, you know, collects money from, from these all those same places. people, these same corporations, these same billionaires. We expect that she's going to go gonna get against up in them and change the trend and go against them. Okay. Mm. See, it, it's like if in this, this now this happened after Bernie Sanders conceded mm-hmm. to Hillary Clinton and he kind of went on a campaign trail for her, it you just look at him. Look at his eyes. Right. Look at how he talks and answers questions um, in regard to, uh, you know, trying to get, you know, more support for Hillary Clinton. Right. But it, just look at his face. Before, you know, in the primaries, like all of his commentary and his energy and his, you know, positions were kind of driven by him standing for something, right? right? Right. Now you look at his face and when he talks, it looks like he's trying to sell something. Right. And that's that's a beautiful way to describe it. It's something that it doesn't really seem right that he would believe in. So it's kind of like, you know, being that snake oil salesman, you know, that, you know, you know this product ain't really going to be good for you. But, you know, it's what I got. It's my job. That That's what I got to do here. But don't worry. You know, the day after she gets elected, we are going to mobilize. The snake oil is going to work. Yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work because we're going to request it. And we're going to mobilize and we're going to make sure it happens. How? Now, now again, he, he categorizes this as practical. Pra- do you know what practical means? For a progressive politician. Somebody that actually, actually believed in progressivism and actually believed in catering to the needs of their constituency. What would be practical is supporting 
a candidate that also believed the same way you did. Mm -hmm. And there's only one other candidate out there like that. That would be Jill Stein. That would be the practical choice. 